Hi Intune friends, in today's video we're just going to update uh, to Windows 11 24H2. So here I have a machine, where I just checked for updates, it doesn't seem to have any more updates. This one is on uh, 23H2, if I run a Winver here it should be verified, yep. Here it says uh, 23H2, and 24H2 recently got released. So let's see to enable that so we go devices we are in intune.microsoft.com devices since it's a windows we can click on windows and then we have windows 10 and later updates here so as we know that's a feature update the difference between the feature and the quality update quality updates are uh, each month feature updates are nearly once a year the 24 in 24H2 stands for 2024, the year. The H2 is for the second half of 2024. So, uh, here we have a previous. I will actually release this one. So, it's not going to be any groups using that was the previous one. Well, I'm actually going to keep this group for the new one. So, I retire this one since we this is 23 h2 let's create a new one so we click here on the feature updates create profile we name it why not call it the uh, 24 h2 and we can send 24 h2 update for all gbn uh, windows uh, computers oops that's not how you spell computers so here, if you don't have that in your list, uh, log out your console and log back in. You should have it. It's fairly new if you look this in October. Um, so we want the uh, Windows 11 version 24H2. Make available to user as a required update. Yes. Uh, we can make it available a specific date. I want it as soon as possible. And I'm going to add it to everyone. No scope tags. So probably if you run it in your company you run it first to a ring zero ring one or a validation group i'm gonna write off send it to everyone here i thought i added but i didn't let's see i missed a little box there added select okay so perfect next that's it so it's not harder than that uh, there it is. I should probably have named it a bit more in style with what we already had, right? Let me go in and fix that. Edit. I don't really like the GBN before there, but okay. Win. Was it something like this? If not, that's my new standard. Yeah. There we have it. Uh, I don't know if this one is a sign. I, I should probably delete this. Nope, it's not a sign to anyone. So to make it a bit more modern and nice, I'll delete this. Bye-bye. And delete this one. So, in progress, indeed. Okay, good. So that one is set. Now it's going to take a little time until the machine have get it. So I'm going to pause the video. Hopefully this machine here, when we check for updates, will have more. Right now it haven't. I'm going to do some sync commands to speed this up. It's going to happen sooner or later anyway. Okay, so here we are on the machine. If we look updates, see if 24 h2 is there it is it's already started to download so it's working so this is going to take some time so i post the video here let this one install and then we see what's the uh, new features in 24h2 one more thing i wanted to show is that uh, so this is uh, version 23h2 and that's the last version who have WordPad. So right now I have WordPad. Yay! But after the upgrade, it's going to be gone. So 
It's been here since um, Windows 95, so nearly 28 years we have had uh, WordPad. So WordPad is going away. So once this have downloaded, installed an update, then WordPad is gone. Okay, now the machine have installed the 24H2 update and rebooted. So if we look Winver, it says 24H2 here and 24, as we said before, 2024 and H2 means for the second half. Um, so if we look WordPad now, yeah, it's gone. And it's even say here, it's no longer being updated and there will be no uh, successor to WordPad. So WordPad goes to the grave. So what else could be new in 24H2? Uh, qu quite a lot. So if we start with Explorer, let's say I have this uh, log uh, folder here and I want to go somewhere else, but I might want to come back here. Then I can right click on it and duplicate um, uh, the tab. That one is pretty nice. So with 24H2, you have pretty much uh, compression and extractor capability. So before I always installed the 7-zip. Now you don't have to do that anymore. So if I right click on these, I can compress this into three formats, zip, 7-zip and tar file. And tar have different options. If I click here, I can, if I change this one to tar, there you have uh, GNU and uh, POSIX and a lot of different ones. And it actually, this is supported to compress it. If you want to go the other way to sort of decompress or um, extract an archive, you, it support more files, even RAR files. Another thing, let's see if I have any PNG files on this. Uh, let's go picture. Oh, I do. Perfect. So if I right click on this one and take properties, under the details uh, tab before you couldn't change such as uh, author and stuff now i can so i can put myself here john brent and i can say of course you can't change the uh, width of the image and we are happy for that but all the other stuff we can change which uh, lens model and everything uh, so yeah uh, that's one up. Another one is digital signature. That one existed before, but only on files who actually had the digital signature. So this one, uh, you always see it, and I actually like that. So if we take a file um, who have a digital signature, if we go under C uh, Windows, for example, you saw a Windows old folder there. It's going to stay there on, uh, for a few days because I just updated this, this machine. Um, if we take uh, explorer.exe, for example, take properties, that one's going to have a digital signature from uh, Microsoft to verify that uh, you, you can trust that file. So that's a bit about the Explorer. You also have down here, have changed a bit in 24H2. If you click here, now you have to click if you, it only shows six at the same time before you you saw all so you have to click here to see more uh, registry have changed very slightly let's look at that so if we look at the registry let's say we want to search for something here in win32 app and we go to find then you now have this search in subtree so if you only want to search in the subtree and then it stop so i like that that's nice new one uh, you also have something called the sudo if I probably didn't pronounce that so good, right? But if you um, I'm going to open this CMD as a normal If you have any experience with Linux or Mac OS and running terminal Linux Unix Then you maybe have heard about sudo sudo will not work here now and I will explain why but let's say uh, We just want to see hey, how does sudo work? Should it work so it says run option. So let's say we want to run a new window, but so sudo, I should explain what it does. It runs as uh, admin. So you see now here, this command line, I'm not as an admin, so I can just run one command. I'm just going to do this new window. You don't have to do that, but I like to do that. Window and then cmd.exe. Then it says that hey i'm a normal user right now but i want to run cmd as admin so sudo is disabled on this device or this machine so how do you enable that very simple we go settings and then i think it's under system oh we are under system then it should be for developers 
And if we scroll down here, it should be enable uh, sudo. So we just enable it. You have to be admin to enable it. So actually what it's done, it's running sudo and then config enable force new window. Okay, we say yes. So now sudo should work. Let's see if we need to restart this one or it work right away. It worked right away. So now it prompts because it's not magical sudo. It doesn't make you admin. If you already are admin and you didn't start an app as admin, and now I click yes here. So now with the sudo, I have a CMD. So that's great for us who do um, uh, Win32 app in Intune. If you started a CMD not as an admin and you need to test the package, you can just run sudo and then the pass to your script. And then for just that script, you're admin. Something else that's really small change. You know when you right click on the file and you have these uh, images here of cat copy rename. Now they actually put the name here. If you look on a 23H2, you didn't have the name. I think that's pretty not nice. I have learned what this one means, but yeah, why not? That's nice. So those are a few updates. Also, uh, 24H2 support the uh, new Wi-Fi standard uh, version 7. So uh, whenever that be needed, that supported. Uh, we can look also uh, reports. So this was the one we created. If we go under uh, reports here and then go Windows updates, then click on reports. And remember, this was not a quality update. This was a feature update. And then we select, yes, this is R1. If you don't have one, you just click here and uh, select. And let's generate this one again. So this one is pretty slow. Okay, so the one I'm on, were on, let me see. 33 is this one. So it says scheduled pending, which is not true. But last event time was the 12th October and right now it's the 14th. So that's fine. So when this one's gonna pick up, it's gonna say installed. So right now it got some old data. So that's it about the Windows 11 24H2, how to push it, what's new in it, a bit how to see the report. So again, it's under here updates and then under feature updates. And there it is. You don't really get any progress here. You have to go to the report. We can get all the settings and well, they were fair, fairly few. So that's it. Thank you very much for following along. Have a great day.